President Biden just announced plans to forgive $9 billion in student loan debt and what he's calling fixes to current programs. He says this will help 125,000 borrowers, including those who work in public service, jobs like teachers, nurses, firefighters, low-income borrowers who've been making payments for at least 20 years, and those with a total or permanent disability. Now, this comes as the White House explores new paths for loan forgiveness after the Supreme Court struck down the president's landmark plan back in June. The president saying the fight's not over. My administration will continue to use every tool at our disposal to help ease the burden of student debt so more Americans be, can, free to, can be free to achieve their dreams. It is an uncertain time if you're a student. The cost of college is still going up, plus the Supreme Court gutting affirmative action in college admissions. I recently sat down with a diverse group of high school seniors to see how they're navigating all of this as they apply for college. Here's part of our conversation. I want to start with just a show of hands. How many in this room plan to go to college? Raise your hand. Everybody. I guess I'm not surprised. <laughs> Why is it important for you to go to college right out of high school versus entering the workforce right away? I think a college education, a college degree, is a tangible and palpable way to show that I'm ready, um, experienced and I can make an impact. We have this awesome, diverse group in this room. We just had this Supreme Court decision that strikes affirmative action in the college admissions process. How do you think that impacts you and your plans? As an Asian person myself, there's a very strong culture of it back in my home country in South Korea. Uh, a lot of after school extracurricular activities are focused on college prep and going to college. and. To have that divide where some people are not afforded that or it's simply not a cultural notion for them, I just think that the striking down of affirmative action was very harmful. Jesus, you called it intriguing. Yeah. Why? Some colleges have an incentive of perpetuating the system, but in a different way. It's through the essays now that they want to have a more personalized and more, um, you know, specific um, almost referral of who you are, because what diversity really is, is it isn't what you see. It isn't the visual, but it's really here. And next, Chacha, you've said that you don't believe that this decision necessarily impacts you personally negatively. How do you see it? For me, being able to attend college in, in America is a huge privilege to me. Even um, it's recognized by my family back in India because they think it's such a huge opportunity. Um, so I have been preparing for it myself. But I think it is a disadvantage to those who have already been affected by, you know, their race in terms of um, college admissions. Show of hands if you think race should be allowed as a consideration in the college admissions process. You all do. Leela, you had called this Supreme Court decision a problem morally. The reason it becomes a moral issue is because I do inherently benefit from it. Um, I'm cur like personally identify as half Asian and half white. I think it's an inherent problem in our society. We've had so much systemic racism that perpetuates this inability for specifically black and Hispanic people to attend colleges. I just think that the Supreme Court ruling to strike affirmative action from colleges is just a very optimistic ruling on their part because the entire point was to create equity in a time where people were not as equal as they could be. Is it an equal playing field? Uh, it's definitely not an equal playing field. I definitely like learning more about other cultures and other people and, and let's say we have a group discussion in class. I like to see uh, other people's point of views and how they think about like how they view a uh, situation and for me I could learn from that. It's really important to see diversity in the colleges you go to because it's not just a color of your skin thing, it's a mindset, it's sharing cultures and it's really important for universities to take it into account. So like I've seen many essay prompts being posted from universities that really emphasize the idea of race and, and how that's influenced you and impacted you within your academic career and I definitely find hope in it because if you click a box, right, which was the debate, you know, how, how much can clicking a box really tell of a student of their shared experience? What factors are going into your thinking in considering where you're applying to school? 
A lot of it, financial aid and financial planning is a huge part. How many of you that feel like that's a factor in where you're going to be applying? Show of hands, everybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cost is a big one. My parents uh, and I have sat down and had this conversation, and they've made sure that I understand that going to college is an investment in my own future. Does it matter what you study in terms of the career you pursue because of the cost of college, because of the potential loans you'll have to pay off? I think it definitely matters what you study because there's this idea that you can go to college and just study your passion, but because you because you're investing in your future, you really have to focus more on what job will allow you to pay that off. Is anybody here planning to just follow their passion and hope the rest just works out? No? <laughs> <laughs> Eva, you have said that cost is a major factor for you. It is something that worries me a lot because it's going to be something that affects me after I graduate. And so like, College is the investment, you know? It's something that you're putting a lot of work towards now, you're gonna put a lot of money towards, and you're gonna need that degree later. But there is a limit for me of where I can say, okay, this is a worthy investment. My dad has always told my brother and I that, you know, if you get into Harvard, that's great. If Rutgers gives you a full ride, guess where you're going? <laughs> Those students are such an interesting group, so engaged, so intelligent, and determined to get that college education, even with the financial barriers that exist. So you may be wondering, how expensive is it anyway these days to go to college? Take a look at this. This is from US News and World Report's annual survey of ranked colleges. And tuition and fees at a public in-state school is gonna run about 10,000 a year. It's about double for out of state. If you're looking at a private college, we're talking 40 to 50K, even more at the most elite schools. And again, this is per year, not even including room and board and books. So you're talking tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars going into education and potentially having to pay back those student loans afterwards. I want to thank everybody over there at McNair High, especially those students. They're just such an impressive group.